Okay, so and I'm just going to keep taking this out here. All right, finally. So now that I'm looking at it here, I'm gonna you know try and make sure that everything looks good. There's no um, little pieces of anything anywhere. I'm gonna make sure that there's nothing in the holes that the spray holes here. Um, this is where your water actually comes out of. Um, it comes out of there, and it also goes in the center of the shaft here oh, and there was something in there and then comes out these holes over here so you want to make sure that all these holes are oh, there was something in there you want to make sure they're all clean and like I said, uh, it helps to have a uh, an air compressor to go ahead and blow out, make sure that there's nothing uh, stuck in in the middle here, be, and that's going to clog these holes down here, um, and or you know, blow out any pieces you see in all of that. Um, so. One of the things I'm looking at here is on the shaft here. I'm looking to see if any of the bearings are like worn in to the shaft. And you can see there's a little bit of shine right there. Like it's starting to wear, but there's it's not worn down at all. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, then I'm going to kind of make sure it feels good. That, you know, no real slop to it. Um, so yeah, that all looks good. If I change out the axle to the new style, then it, the, most of that goes away anyways. Um, however, if I wanted to replace the bearings, I would take out the water seal that's right there and then get all five of the bearings out. Um, sometimes they can be kind of stuck, and so you'll need to find a socket that is just the right size to go in this hole, but not in the, you know, so in the blue hole, but not inside the bearing. And it's, there's just enough, um, I forget what size socket I use, but it's uh, like a, so you want a, uh, a socket with an extension or a uh, long socket that you can push pretty much all the way down. And uh, sometimes when you take out the water shield, they'll just fall out, but usually you gotta press it. Um, so press that out through there. Um, bearings are, do not go out very often at all. Um, you're probably going to be years into it before you actually need to do anything with them. Um, and that's why they don't actually come in the gear set. Okay, I'm going to take a look at this side. Now, see, this is kind of how it should come out. Although that one has a broken piece too. So usually... In a decent uh, unit, it will come out just like that, and you can kind of once it's on while it's on the shaft here, you can see. Oh boy, it's not. Uh, oh, see, there's a little bit of a catch right there. There shouldn't be any sort of a catch. Oh, actually, that's probably an extra, the extra gear piece. Uh, I'll look at it better in a sec. So it's still catching like right there. And so you're probably going to want to replace that. Um, that one actually feels pretty darn good. So it's, I'll be going through these more in a little bit. Uh, but basically there's several wear spots on these. Um, so one of the wear spots is actually this right here. This should be raised above the gear. 
And the only way, I mean, it's so, such a tight tolerance. The only way you're going to know is put two of them together and kind of see if it's going, if it hits. The uh, other wear part on these is this line on the back here. Um, and what usually happens is that these hit because they're not on that anymore. Um, and that's what catches if, if this, these are worn out. Um, so in all these units, there is a spacer inside where the gear goes. Um, there's actually two different sizes of spacers. So you'll want to pay attention to where they go. If you buy a whole kit, the spacers are already in the right place. So just follow the directions of the kit. And assuming no one has been inside the brush, they should be in the right place too. But I'm going to tell you anyways. So you're going to have two thick ones. That, see, that's a thick one there. So you're going to have a thick one, thick one, skinny one. And it's basically the thick one goes on these two, you know, in between those connections, the skinny one goes in between the turbine and the final gear. Okay. And the, the spacers along with uh, the, the raised edge of these is what keeps it from hitting, you know, these hitting this. So, and then on this one, You'll notice that these two are exactly the same. This one's got a short hub on it. This is the AL2 transmission adapter, and this is what goes bye-bye if you replace it with the AL3. This shorter one fits inside of the axle like that. The longer ones will stick up and gap and then you have you know it won't fit in your housing right um, all of them use the same exact gears so any of these gears can go on any of these sp spots um, the one trick to putting this back together um, and not having a hard time getting it to go right is that these three outer rings are directional. So basically, um, I think that's actually clean enough in there. To go ahead and show you this. I'm going to go ahead and take three out. And I'm going to go ahead and... All right, so on the gear housing, there are four um, grooves, and on these plastic grooves, there's three, or sorry, four locking nubs, if you will, all the way around. Now, the way these are molded, the, the, the teeth are slightly offset um, compared to the four um, nubs. So... On the surface of this one, you're actually going to see uh, molded in dots go all the way around like this. And one of those dots actually lines up with one of these outer nubs. And you're going to want to make sure that every one of them with the dot on the nub goes in the same groove. And that's going to make sure that all your teeth on all three of these outer rings line up. And if you do that, putting all the gears back in is way simpler and, and just, it just goes right in. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and clean things up a little bit here and then um, put it back together. 